Hey there, it's Ben Hassel here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to be having a look at how we work with animation and compositing in Final Cut Pro 10. Now, we're going to be looking at some of the built in animation and keyframing tools in Final Cut Pro 10. We're also going to be mixing that with the Stupid Raisins Arrow Pot plugin available for Final Cut Pro 10, which can also motion track objects in your edits in Final Cut Pro 10. So this is the third of three videos um, that I'm doing on compositing animation. The first two were to do with green screening and creating a double exposure effect. And we're gonna be using the results of those videos um, to work with the animation and also to kind of do some motion tracking with the, the Arrow Pop plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. So definitely do go and check those out. You don't need to have covered those videos. Um, you can use a different video with kind of movement in it that you can do the motion tracking with. Um, but let's dive in, have a look at animation in Final Cut Pro 10 and also the Arrow Pop plugin from Stupid Raisins that's available on FX Factory. In the first two of this three video series, we had a look at how we do a basic green screen and then also how we create this double exposure effect. In this video, we're gonna have a look at how we animate uh, those layers. So the green screen video layer and also the double exposure effect. And then also how we add these arrow pop animations from Stupid Raisins um, using some of the tr motion tracking they have in there as well. So you can see these arrow pops kind of pop up, but they're also tracking the motion, the animation that we've created in those other videos, which is super useful if you're trying to create videos that have a little bit more impact, a bit more fun. And I definitely had a bit of fun kind of making these recordings and also these videos. So basically, we're gonna dive right in here into a, an unfinished example. So basically, I have my green screen video. Uh, and if you haven't got a green screen um, or a double exposure, don't worry too much about it. As long as you've got a video which you can track something in, then you can follow along with the arrow pop stuff or you can go back and kind of work on the green screen video yourself and create your own. So basically here, um, we are gonna animate myself um, in this video and then we'll add the arrow pop. So in this video, uh, we're gonna animate so that I kind of throw my arms out as I come up into the middle of the screen. So we're gonna use the on-screen animation in Final Cut Pro. So if I click my motion or transform options here, I can add a keyframe right up uh, in the, the viewer here. So I don't have to kind of go into the inspector or anything like that. I can add that motion in here. And then I'm gonna come back a few frames. I'm gonna make this animation happen a little bit more slowly than I might normally, just so that we can see what's happening. So basically I'm changing the scale of that and then I will drop myself down uh, to the bottom here. So what we will get is something like this. And if I right click on here, I can show my video animation. And that allows me to kind of move um, from keyframe to keyframe. You wanna make sure you animate or kind of make movements in your edit on your keyframes. And I wanna move myself off screen here in the first, the very first keyframe. Uh, if we wanna make sure we're moving specifically between the keyframes, then we can use the arrows up here in the viewer to kind of move between those keyframes. You don't want to add lots of little extra keyframes. Um, if we add something here, for instance, and drag myself down, then we'll get a kind of weird hold and then jump, and that might not be good, might not be what we're looking for. So I'm gonna right click there and delete that keyframe so we get this nice smooth animation. So you can see here, we're animating on, throwing my arms in front, and now we're gonna add the arrow pop here. And actually, I'll move myself a little bit further across to the right there and we'll just make sure we're on this uh, keyframe here. So if we move myself across here, we can have a bit more space for the arrow. So the arrow pop plugin, once you've installed it, um, will be up in your type and generators up on the top left. And we are looking for the stupid raisins arrow pop. So under arrow pop here. And we'll just scroll up to the top here and we are gonna grab one of these hand-drawn arrows. So we'll grab this hand-drawn nine arrow. So all these arrows kind of work in a similar way. Um, I'm gonna hide the video animation here and we drop it onto the timeline. So basically my arrow pop is coming on and I want it to actually finish its animation. So around about here, once my head is uh, kind of in space, so I could add a marker on this layer at that point, find out when I'm up here and then we'll add a marker there and that will mean we can basically line these up and we'll trim this back down again. So now that animation is gonna finish and time with when I'm on screen. So if we highlight the arrow pop animation and turn off our transform or motion properties there, you'll see we get some on-screen controllers for this. So we get a kind of offset. So if I come to this particular point in time, I can position um, using 
my tracking tool option. So I'll just pull this down a bit. Uh, so I'm going to track my glasses here, I think. Seems like the, and move my ears. That's the most high contrast area. And then I'll just move this arrow away to where I want it to be pointing. So I'm going to track backwards. Um, so I'm going to keep my hand drawn layer selected and then I'm going to track backwards. So basically hit the track backwards button and it will track even the layer below. Um, and basically you can see it now moving off the screen as I disappear off screen. So that is done. So if I move back here, you can see that arrow follows me um, as I kind of come up onto the screen. So we get that nice little bit of detail with the arrow um, that means that everything moves a bit more fluidly and a bit more nicely. With the, the hand-drawn arrow, we have some options up in the, the type options here. So we can turn off the build out. Um, so I want the arrow to stay on screen until the, the next clip. We can also change the color of our shapes as well. So we'll pick a nice orange here for our arrow. And we've got some options for kind of the scale of our arrows if we want it bigger, um, same as the on-screen controllers as well. And also we can modify the rotation of that arrow as well. So if we want it to point in a slightly different direction, we can modify the rotation. That won't affect the tracking of it. The tracking is still kind of intact, even though we've made those modifications afterwards. That's super nice. We have a drop shadow um, as well if we want it. It's turned off at the moment, so we can turn that on if we want it on. I'll leave it off. Uh, and then, yeah, we have basic kind of position controls and that kind of stuff. Uh, at the moment, it's bouncing. We can make it pop or shake. So all those will kind of have a different uh, animation there. Okay. So I'm going to let it bounce. I kind of like the bounciness of it. That just means it kind of bounces through the video. So let's come to this video here. So we have a bit of a different kind of set up here with the animation for this one um, basically because we have all these different layers so I can't just animate one layer of this video off the screen I'm going to need to kind of think through things a bit more carefully so what we're going to need to do is actually make a, a group of these layers or a compound clip so I'm going to do alt and g for these top layers and we're actually going to do this then undo it because it's going to cause a little bit of a problem so once I group those layers I lose the the masking for those layers so I'm going to need to create a second white layer here at the bottom. So I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key, duplicate up the white layer, and then we will basically make a compound clip. So Alt and G to duplicate all of those. So now with this layer, um, if I turn on my transform properties, I can come to where I want this to be visible on screen. So I like to play things through and kind of time things in my head and think about how long that animation would take to happen. So around about now it's done. And then I will select this, this compound clip um, and add a keyframe. I find sometimes I need to toggle on and off the transform controls to get them to show up the keyframe. So, and then we'll go back and we'll animate off to the left of the screen. So basically now we have this and we're going to time the arrow to kind of appear from the, the right um, to the left uh, onto the screen as we animate on. And we'll scroll down and pick a different arrow. We'll pick this kind of sketch arrow, drop it on top. And basically, we'll look at when this is finished. So it's around about here. So we'll just kind of eyeball this. So my animation is finished and the arrow looks like it's timing with that nicely. So basically they're coming on screen at the same time. So we'll trim this down at the end. So I'm going to use Alt and the right square bracket to trim that down. And then we'll just come back to when the animation finishes and turn off our transform controls. And now we can work on the position and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to move this over my face again and we'll just then use the offset option that we have here to offset the arrow and to rotate it so we want it rotating this way okay and then if we use the the tracker it will track that layer in the background um, or all the layers that are visible um, and basically we'll animate the arrow as well so if we now play this through 
we can see that arrow is just doing a nice little follow on which is short but nice and subtle and just means that you get that kind of nice fluid motion in your animation when everything times nicely even if it's just for a few frames that we're actually really using that animation um, it's perfectly in sync with the layer in the background there and again we'll turn off the build out and it will just kind of stay on screen until we cut to a different clip so obviously we have the same kind of color options um, in here as well we can dive in and we'll change this to a different color we can change things like the opacity of our arrows uh, and the opacity of the color in the middle if we have any background images so now you can see these kind of simple animations using the grouping or compound grouping of layers and we can kind of create some interesting animations um, that kind of time nicely with these arrows which are great if you want to create kind of eye-catching videos um, great for social media and stuff like that if you want to have arrows point into particular things up on screen so hopefully this tutorial is useful we've kind of covered a few different animation things there for built-in stuff in final cut pro 10 the transform properties the keyframing and then also kind of had a look at the arrow pop from stupid raisins which is a super fun plugin to kind of play around with especially if you're designing infographics or informational videos and arrows are always useful to kind of animate on and point towards certain things so hopefully this like little series of three videos has been useful for you and you've uh, learned some useful tips and tricks um, if you have any questions then do leave them in the comments below but otherwise i look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial